Oh my gosh, you know, this has been such a great blessing for me to be able to be in New Orleans and then share online with all of you and actually witness, actually see this great community in action. I totally understand now why people are relocating from all over the countryside and other parts of the world to just be in St. Petersburg with all of you. Cause I'm telling you the magic, the electrifying presence, that great feeling of essence is coming through this computer this day. And I am, well, I'm, I'm humbled. <laughs> um, I'm so moved by seeing what all of you are doing there from a different set of eyes today and from a different perspective. Thank you. There is one life, that life is God, and that life is our life right now. Say that with me. There is one life, that life is God, and that life is our life right now. Turn to somebody and say that to them. There is one life and that life is God and that life is your life right now. You'll notice that as you were speaking those words that the vibration within you started to change. You'll notice that your heart opened up in a new way of hearing and in listening we, we resonate with that statement because it aligns us to the oneness of nature. We are back into the space that we began when we birthed on this earth, on this planet, is that we knew that we were oneness. We knew that with nature, we knew that with life, we knew that with each other. And then we learned different ideas and concepts that perhaps for many taught us different things as in division, as in you're better, as in you win, I lose. But in the great teaching of new thought, the more you win, the more I win. The more you love, the more I'm benefiting from that love. The more we hold hands together, the broader our circle. It is that great statement that says, if the world is round, why take sides? If the world is round, why take sides? So today I wanted to talk about be still. Be still and know. And I, I think I wanted to talk about it because I, I want to be in that space. <laughs> There's so much that has been going on around us. And as you notice, it says to be still and know. Be still and no. It doesn't say no and then be still. It doesn't say no your bank account's okay, no your family's okay, no your retirement is okay and then you can be and then you can be still. No. So it says be still and then no. So what that implies to me in metaphysics is it's a knowing that is coming from a different place. It's not a knowing that's about what the news says or what the weather says. It's about an inner core knowing. It's about a deep rooted knowing that's ancestral. As they were saying earlier, it's that great listening as Dr. Aileen said, that we listen to all of those that have walked before us. My Angelo talked about that, that she was here representing the 10,000 people that had gone before her because she was bringing forth a knowing that is deeper than what we see, deeper than what we hear with the five senses, but it's an inner core awareness that we are connected, that everything that happens to a little girl in Africa is happening to me simultaneously. Simultaneously. Everything that happens to a white moose that was tragically killed in Canada today is part of my experience and part of who I am walking and being in this human suit and this journey that, that we call earth, that we call life. I love the story and honoring Michelle Pascal in our second year anniversary. We met him two years ago, 11-11. I wanted to share with you this funny story because he loves it. So a cab driver picks up a nun 
and they're in Manhattan driving through New York. And all of a sudden the cab driver says to the nun, well, you know, I, please don't think I'm weird, but I've always wanted to kiss a nun. And so the nun says, well, okay, well, I, I guess I could do that, but you've got to be single and you've got to be Catholic. And the cab driver says that, well, that's not a problem. That's actually not a problem at all. So pulls over and the nun just lays a big old kiss on the cab driver. And so they drive away and the cab driver says, oh my, oh my, and then began to cry, really began to cry. And the nun was kind of shocked and said, what, what in the world is going on? And the cab driver says, well, I didn't tell you the truth. I, I didn't tell you the truth at all. Um, I'm married and, and I'm Jewish. And so the nun um, looked at the cab driver and said, don't worry about it. <laughs> my name is Kevin and I'm on my way to a costume party. <laughs> I love that. I love, 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 love that story. I think I, I lived a story similar to that in the early days of my life as a, as a chameleon, as being someone that I, that I wasn't. And that's why it's, it's so important when we are looking at the life that we're living, when we represent the solid principles of unity and new thought is that we're being authentic and that we're holding that authenticity and we are being truly who we are. Because if we're not being who we are, then we can't expect others to do the same. It's crucial that that we model that we are the light, the energy, the essence of this human walk. Very, very powerful. You know, in shamanism, when I was studying with my teacher many years ago, we actually did a ritual for the day where we would slice apples and we would set them out at the table. And then I would go into deep meditation and I would ask each and every one of my grandparents and my great grandparents, what gifts have you bestowed upon me? What gifts have you given me? How have you blessed me in this life that I may take those gifts and carry them forth and pass them on to others? By far, it was one of the greatest exercises and rituals that I have done in my life because I have continued to bring their life forward in a way that truly, truly matters. When we look at archetypes, and we talk about archetypes a lot with Illy, actually, because we really want to support people in touching that greater part of, of knowing. And one aspect that we all have is we have the warrior within us. Angelus Arian teaches this material about the power of the fourfold path and what it's like to be a warrior. When you think of warriors in a spiritual sense, we're talking about presence, position, and power. We're, we're talking about a person that is modeling from a knowing, not a brain knowing, not a mind, not a what your SAT score is, not how many degrees you have, but that inner knowing. And that that presence, that positioning and the power, it comes through, it's unwavering, it's, it's so powerful. I remember the, the first time that Reverend Wanda spoke at our community and she just blew everybody away. And um, my wife, Barbara, turned around and says, that girl, now she's got that knowing and you better have her as a, as a teacher. I look at all of our teachers. I look at each and every one of you today, you, you're exemplifying that presence and that positioning and that, that power. That's what Martin Luther King Jr. portrayed. That's what Mother Teresa portrayed was that essence and, and that energy, the Gandhi vibration. It's that, it's that space that's pure and true. And we need more of that. We need more of that energy in our government in our educational system. We need more of that warrior archetype expressed more in, in new thought, in, in the new thought movement, because the shadow of the warrior, you might wonder what is the shadow of, of the warrior? 
Thank you for asking me. The shadow of the warrior is a rebel, a person that's rebellious, a person that's a victim, you know, always blaming something or someone, or a person that is invisible. How many great people have you met in, in your life? And they're powerful. They have so much to give. They are so much in their, in their own essence, but they, they stay in a closet all their lives. That's the shadow of the warrior. And the medicine for becoming more of the warrior archetype in your life, and whether you have claimed that role full time or not, you know, is part of what you're doing, whether you are aware or not. That's why we have so many great people. They have so much to give this planet. They have so much oneness to bring, so many new concepts, and yet they hide. They hide behind addiction. They hide behind excuses. They hide behind blaming their parents, which as you know, you're not allowed to blame your parents at First Unity if you're over 30, but they hide. And that, that shadow overrides them and their, their light. Medicine is the sound of rain. Medicine is walking meditations, uh, looking at the sunrise, looking at the sunset, those are all good medicine. Playing a rattle, dancing, it's definitely what brings that warrior and it brings it out. You know, in scripture, in Psalms 46.10, we're told, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And I would say that through the years of using that scripture, and through the years of thinking about that space and that knowing, what I used to skip over was the word that. Be still and know that I am God. So I would like you to ask yourself today, what that are you occupied with right now? What is the that that is on your mind, that is concerning you, that is preoccupying you, that is a thing in your life, a situation, a circumstance, something that you're pondering because you want to remember that that is God. The that can be what makes you. It can be what turns you around into the most powerful and profound leader in your own life. Wow. I used to run away from the that. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Oh, it's it, no big deal. No big deal. You know, it's just a that. But the that gets bigger and would grow. And in and, and its essence, it would build upon. So identify the that because it is the that in your life that is drawing out more of the I am within you. The I am within your essence, the I am within your being, that power and that presence that's blessing every cell and fiber of your being. It's music, 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 literally, to your soul, to your soul. There's a story of a woman that she's getting ready to run and she's in one of the local parks. And so she leans into the tree because she's stretching her calves and she's getting ready for her long run and she keeps leaning in. And a young boy walks up to her and says, well, you can do it that way, but it's gonna take you a long time. <laughs> but you could come out better if you just use a saw. <laughs> the way to push forward in this life is to be grounded is to be grounded, you can accomplish so much more when you learn to be, when you learn to be comfortable with yourself, when you learn that you don't have to edit, you don't have to rehearse, you just come from an open heart, you allow this, this space of energy to flow through you, when you just can be and not think about what someone thinks or what someone feels or if it's pleasing to others, just let it all hang out, all hang out around you. How do we ground? We felt grounded today. I know I do after the song Intentional. 
after listening to that great music and the beat of the drum, it's an instantaneous way of grounding. Another way to ground is to, to have a space of, of recognition, to recognize that you are sent. You are sent. You are an heir to the kingdom. God sent you and sent the package that goes with you. You don't have to do anything but practice being the best you you can because the you kit arrived with you. The reason you haven't seen it in many cases, because some people are already saying, well, I'm arguing in their head. Well, I, I haven't seen mine yet. It's because you haven't totally been the authentic you. When you express the authentic you, the people in your life often change. The, the new comes in because it, it greatly in a more greater way aligns with who you are in your essence and that powerhouse that you are. And you look around and you go, whoa, I now see the mirror of me. What is the mirror I saw before? The mirror of who I was being before. You know, I've never forgotten that saying from my early days at 19, a loving person lives in a loving world. A hostile person lives in a hostile world. An ignorant person lives in an ignorant world. An angry person lives in an angry world. You're not helping the world when you talk about somebody else over there or in, in another place or located in another part of the world not helping your family and one another when you're spending time talking about how angry that person is, because guess what happens? You become that. You become that. So you want to step back to that place and ask yourself, what am I recognizing in, on this journey called life? What am I feeding? What am I paying attention to? There's a saying that, that says, stop trying to teach the pig to sing. It annoys you <laughs> and it makes the pig angry. Energize that space called you. Energize what you can do something about. Focus on laser focus where you want to be. Give that of your essence of your nature of this wellspring of life. You've, we've all just barely tapped the surface as to what we are capable of, as to who we are in our divine beingness. I don't know about you, I'm, I'm holding that. I'm ready for more and more miracles and more and more power and more and more love. But as a sacred warrior, rest assured, we're not talking about power over people our power over parties, our power over uh, anything. We're talking about inner power of knowing that you represent God. And that is the greatest honor. It says that we will be exalted. We will be exalted that, that we will be in this space that we will have such high regard for life. for the heart beating, for the breath that is being given. Oh my gosh, what a gift and what a blessing. There's one thing I really want you to look at before uh, Thanksgiving. I want you to think about the things in your life that you are allowing. What are you allowing? It could be a project at your house, could be some clutter that needs to be released. It could be, you know, every time you walk across that carpet in that particular room, you see that red spot on it, or one day you're going to stop and you're going to clean it up. It could be the lack of feng shui in one of your rooms. It could be that some of your clothes are no longer fitting. I'm not going to take that one on this morning. <laughs> But what are you allowing, allowing? What are you allowing? For some people, it's that you have a great to-do list, but you never put you on it. And unless you put you on it, you will always fall shy 
of that list. What are you allowing? Could it be that you need to address something? Could it be that words need to be spoken? Could it be you need to clear the air with someone? Allowing in your life and not honoring takes your energy. It's an energy zapper. And you don't want to do that when you have the opportunity to live a vibrant, energetic, and dynamic life. There's only one life, and that life is God. Wow, and it's our life right now. And the day has only just begun. What awaits us in this mystery and in this power that we call mysticism? So a woman, in closing, I will tell you that this woman was working on her taxes and her little five-year-old little girl was not going to have it. And she kept wanting to play with her and she kept wanting to do things with her. And so the mother grabbed a magazine and she flipped through the pages and she saw a, an image of the world. And so she ripped out the page and she tore it in several different pieces. And she told the little girl, she said, put that together. Take the time and put that together because mommy's busy. And so in just a minute, the little girl says, I'm done, I'm done. And the mom said, how, how did you finish so quick? And the little girl said, well, on the other side of the page was a little girl like me. And I put that together and then I have the world. We have a great call now. We have a wonderful shamanic spiritual call, unity. Those of us that reflect and experience and express new thought and science of mind, we have a mighty call forth right now. And I invoke you, don't talk about the world unless you realize you're talking about yourself. Don't talk about a space of any kind in any particular way unless you are coming from that inner knowing and that great powerful being that you are. There is one life and that life is God. And that life is your life right now. Don't miss it. Thank you, peace.